On February 16th, every year is um, National Almond Day, and it recognizes the versatility and the healthful almond, um, almond nut. Now, this delicious nut is native to the Middle East and thrives in warm, dry climate with mild winter. The day celebrates the benefits and uses of almond. This is one milk that I do not joke with, one fruit I don't joke with because I'm lactose intolerant. So most times, it's just like so expensive. So most times when I need to take cereal or anything, I have to buy almond milk because that's the only thing that my system can tolerate. I was not meant to suffer. <laughs> lactose intolerant people? <laughs> my dear. I have mild. I like those intolerance, but it's not. Mine it's is not, horrible. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. I can't stand almond milk mm -hmm. or even oat milk because it's tasteless. It's tasteless. Yeah, I know, what but I, I have to, to manage do? it like that. And I'm not with. And I'm, I'm not supposed to use sugar. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <silly. laughs> Are you an almond lover? Um. So I don't know that I'll go as far as saying that I'm a lover, but um, it has its uses. So there's certain things that um I like to eat. Uh, that almond milk is like a, is a core um, ingredient, but I also echo and Jennifer's sentiments. It is tasteless, as with most nut milks. Like um, I think, with the exception of tiger nut milk, all the rest of them are just bland. And you know that when you're drinking it, it's either you're lactose intolerant, tolerant, or you're trying to be part of the fit farm crew. So, <laughs> so that's it. But um, yeah, it works in certain recipes. But beyond that, I don't know that I would have it in like coffee, tea, or cereal, I wouldn't. It is well. <laughs> All right, Uti, what did you, you find for us in the news? Uh, Alara, you say? I said you can always use honey. Yeah, my darling. We manage it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uti, what did you find for us in the news? Uh, so mine is a bit of a sad story. and a So it's sad and annoying and frustrating all at the same time. The headline reads, Soldiers Avenging Colleagues' Death by Killer Cop Burn Station. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, the story speaks about soldiers avenging the killing of their colleague by a policeman on Tuesday as they stormed the Ogijo area of Ogun State. Um, the resulting chaos led to the destruction of cars, property, and the police station, <clears throat> and the police station being burnt. Now, this story stood out for me because this is not a new um, scenario in Nigeria. Long have we had this um, sort of narrative of armed forces, you know, coming in their droves to take reprisals, to take um, uh, revenge or carry out reprisal attacks. It's, it's a narrative that I've heard, I think, ever since maybe the late 80s or early 90s, where you will hear they slapped a policeman, policemen came in their droves to fight army, army came in their droves to fight policemen. So that it's it, that it, these are the law enforcement agencies that are taking the law into their own hands to, um, you know, you can't say that, we're saying that the masses sometimes take the law into their own hand and, and carry out jungle justice. What does it say when um, there's also reprisals from law enforcement agencies and people who should be peacekeepers? Um, so for me, it's an issue there, but it also highlights the frustrations that we have. If we had a functioning legal system that people trusted then people would be confident to know that they would get justice in the courts. But because that is also um, lacking, people feel that they need to take matters into their own hands. And the sad part of it is that property um, get property and lives get caught in the crosshairs. Um, I actually knew someone um, who got caught in this. In fact, was just driving through not knowing um, and got caught in the resulting chaos. So really important that um, all the different factors come together to put a stop to, to occurrences like this. Um, like I said, it's, it's sad at the same time as frustrating. Wow. Alero, your story. Uh, so my story speaks to um, Pastor Dye's attempting to recreate Jesus 40 days fast. So when I saw this news, I mean, it was something that... Uh, in fact, because medically, this is something that you have to be very, very certain about before you go into. But anyway, the news basically reads, um, a pastor in Mozambique died after attempting to fast for 40 days like Jesus, where he had done, uh, how, when Jesus had done this after his baptism, according to the report on Thursday. 
Um, so he's a, the pastor is the founder of um, the Santa and Evangelical Church, and he has been unable to stand or bathe or walk for um, you know for the number of days he has actually you know fasted for. And unfortunately, he was reported to have um, passed away on th on Wednesday at the hospital because he was experiencing some heart failures and a couple of um, you know health issues. So this basically is just speaking to yes, it's okay to you know be spiritual but we also need to focus on our health because um you, you know some people might have under underlying health issues and you need to focus on how your body is reacting to fasting so this basically just you know makes us you know remember that we're humans and trying to recreate what jesus did i really don't know know how that or how that got to happen <laughs> but i mean we just have to be very careful with with a couple of things that we did. So this pastor basically has lost his life um, attempt, attempting to fast for um, forty days. It is where well. <laughs> oh, Jenny for your story. Well, even the Bible says that people lack my people perish because of lack of knowledge. But mm -hmm. yeah, my story Fufu energizes me. Dot mount forward at Dayemi boost scoring against Chelsea. Mm -hmm. So this remarkable young man, Karim Adeyemi, um, scored the goal um, during his match and that was the only goal for that night. And when they interviewed him and asked him, he said Fufu energizes him. So basically he said that he has always been eating Fufu with his dad and he has very good genetics and then he posted a video of him eating Fufu as well. No wonder I saw a video of Fufu eating <laughs> trending. I was wondering what. <laughs> okay, well, on that note, let me take my story. My story is a video, actually. If they can pull out that video, uh, then I will just leave it there. And when we come back, we can then talk more on it. Do we have my video? I'll go interview. <laughs> Who <laughs> 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 Hey, it's like well, you know, where house is it? 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 Billion there. Yes. 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 Bottom line is that you see this thing that the president and the MFLA they're trying to do, mm -hmm. right? There's just so much going on. And uh, I will leave it there because I would like to hear Uti's thought on this. <laughs> She'll say I've come again, but I would like to hear her thought on this because now from the video they were saying that they do transactions of over a billion naira that he can check his phone and see it. What you've been doing transactions of over a billion? Why didn't you bring the money? Mm -hmm. So they were actually taking that 150 million naira to the CBN. Which is fine for me, as far as I'm concerned. You're the one that's stressing yourself because they had asked you to take it to commercial banks. You didn't take it. We'll take a break. We'll come back from the break. We'll discuss the main topic for the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 